Hello, in this video, we are going to look at fixing some of the problems that we've got in our little WebGL application so far. Well, I think it's looking all good for the most part, it's pretty decent. The couple of problems are one, the rotation is rotating the object is. If I start adding another, you know, object, so let me just quickly add another one. And so you would just duplicate that line, so you would have different translations as well. So let, yeah, let me just add that. Where was I getting those translation values from? They weren't these values anymore. Forgot where I'm getting them from. Uh, okay, so I had them um, based on you know keyboard input. So we don't actually. I'm gonna revert it back to these just for this video, just because uh, you can easily add the keyboard input if you want. It doesn't really matter. Make sure this is working as it is. Okay, so I just need another set of these. I want to say another set. I need to change that to translation. And I just need to reset these values. I'll set this to like zero and, and I'll move this to the left, let's say. Okay, so we've got the you know second one. Looking all right, looking pretty decent so far. Look at what's happened there. The that big cube, the reason it's bigger is not because the cube's bigger, it's nearer the camera, but it doesn't properly handle the depth here. It is basically just messing up. So we need to sort that out. So that's one of the problems. The other problem is it's kind of hard to do individual rotation at the moment for the objects. So that's what we're going to be fixing. So let me get rid of this. We won't be doing translation using this method at all now. So what we need to do is actually go to our vertex shader, get rid of translation. So we're not even going to be handling it in, or not specifically ourselves in the shader. We're going to be factoring it in to the M matrix, the move matrix. So we're going to create a second matrix actually before i do that let me just show you it working with one cube and then we'll do it for the second cube and once you've got it for working for one cube it's, you know it's super easy so we've got you know this right here which oh, i just what did i press press something on my keyboard <laughs> okay so we've got this rotate you know rotation here works you know very well all happy with that but what we want to do is actually modify some of the matrix values. So let me show you a translation matrix. Yeah, it's what we're looking for. Okay, so a translation matrix either, so again, it is an either scenario depending on the way the matrix is designed. Uh, this is a good one to show as well. So it's either the translation values are here, and if this is zero in terms of index zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen, or the translation values go down here. So our experiment until then we checked out the translation values we want are these, so twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So we're gonna be putting it directly into our matrix and we don't use those values for anything else because that's what they are specifically there for for the translation so we can just do that by saying marv matrix 12 equals 1 let's say 13 and finally 14 0 minus 10 and if i refresh that as you can see, we get the cube and that's where its position is. If I was to remove that, it'd be in the center position. If I do that, it is moving it further back and slightly to the right and nothing in the Y axis. Okay, so that's all good. Now let me show you how to create another cube. 
So simple stuff. So if I just do this. But what we want to do is also, I want to rearrange the order of this. I want to put this before this draw elements, like so. And this is going to, we're going to have another set of these, mainly just for the mob matrix, but you might have a different one for the others as well, potentially, for this as well. So if I put this right there, this is going to be called mob matrix 2. And... You know, feel free to rename it to something a bit more specific. You know, if it's like the player matrix, the enemy matrix, that sort of stuff. The mob matrix 2 by default is just going to have, you know, a default style of matrix where you got the ones going diagonally. And now, just need to duplicate this. And I'll have to duplicate this first. And we want this to be mob matrix 2. And I just want this to be spinning in the y-axis so you can see there's a visual difference. And now let's actually reposition it out as well. So I'm going to put for this minus 3 and 0. Refresh. So there we go. We have our two matrices. Uh, what's messed up there? That's messed up. So there we go. So we got our two matrices. I was wondering why reset in terms of the positioning but yeah so that is the new cube watch what happens if i put a zero here so this is centered because this is at the front you can't see the back cube anymore if i move it over just like a tad you can slightly see but because that cube is further back it is behind this you know i'm gonna say larger cube but the cube the same is just nearer the camera so the cube that's nearer the camera it looks bigger and it that's the one that's more in view so that's it that's, that's basically you know we fixed our problem of you know not easily being able to do individual rotation and also the fact that the depth wasn't properly calculating as well so this is how you create you know multiple objects just have multiple matrices and yeah that is it you know it's possible you might want to have same matrix maybe you just need to change the position itself so you you know you know you can just change the value but i recommend having multiple matrices it really helps now the next task you know recommend putting it into some sort of class system so you can just easily create an object of the class instead of having to duplicate it again and there again so that is it that is how you know you know you do individual rotation and just make sure you've got a good rotation system and a good your way of creating multiple objects in webgl if you have any questions feel free to pop me a message and as usual i look forward to seeing you in the next video